are off to the races. Uh, things are working. Hopefully, it it took us a lot longer than we expected, but we we are figuring it out. We've here. got the title, technology. Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> yes, I why love you, technology, but not as much as you. You oh, see, yeah. <laughs> always and forever. I'm so happy you. I'm Still so happy you can pull that off the top of your head. I quote it so much, and no one ever, no one ever remembers. It's fantastic. Oh, it's Damn. the best. It's the Pepper original, like, <laughs> like kick every Nick Fury out. That's the best post credit scene. Yeah. <laughs> they ride off into the sunset. The, the best part, yeah, the best part is they filmed that all later after the movie made a bunch of money, and you can tell because it looks so much better than everything else. So, like, that's the best <laughs> part about it. It's like, even though they went back, it was, like, clearly, like, a year later, and so, like, just, they they had money all of a sudden, so it was, like, I don't know. That's that's the best part, because it's a hilarious scene regardless, but it's just, wow, it looks so much better. It's, it's, that's that's the best part. Yeah. So good. Napoleon Dynamite's my shit. I, I will, I will hear no hate about Napoleon Dynamite. Good it's, stuff. It's classic, and I love it for life. Good stuff. Well, welcome, everybody, to uh, episode 16 of the Captain's Log. Uh, where each week we here so. at the Whatnots can come hang out and chill at the end of the week and just relax and talk about whatever we want and have have fun. Uh, my name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Eric Mannix and Hi. Melissa Wilkinson. Hello! How are you guys? What is going on in your lives? I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you go first, Melissa, because I'm a gentleman. Oh, <laughs> I worked all week, which I think is what I've said to you, Kyle, recently on a number of other occasions. I've just been working, and it's the same. Yeah. I had my company picnic today, our annual little summertime picnic, and that was good. I got to have watermelon. I got to have margarita soaked watermelon, and talk to some people I don't normally talk to because we have a very quiet independent little office and we don't talk to each other but sometimes we do and then it's fun okay <laughs> sounds good sounds good what about you eric uh today uh there's a there's an event called lake fair that they do every year in the summer and it's just like a just a shitty ridiculous super overpriced fair that I've been going to since childhood and uh and I still go like kind of like I go out of like obligation now where like I used to go oh. as a kid and like you'd run into all your homies and be like yeah man what's up and just hang out like all day all the time now I go for like an hour I walk around I'm like really hot and uncomfortable I don't know anyone mm-hmm. everyone looks like they're like 12 I'm like get me out of here and I, <laughs> I buy some I buy some curly fries and then I then I leave um, you can't tell at home, but, uh, I, I slathered myself in a sunblock, and I don't, I don't have to wear regular sunblock, I have to wear, like, sunblock with zinc in it, particularly, because I'm a melanoma survivor, so I have to wear, like, the good shit, and, uh, I look like powder right now, like, it's, like, I'm pretty, like, I'm so white that white people already comment on how white I am, which is, that's saying something, but, like, I look like a fish's underbelly right now, it's fucking ridiculous, um, but, like, that, like, marinated in, like, the heat because it gets real muggy in Washington. And so uh, uh, it, it was, like, swamp ass out there today. And so I feel like I'm living in an armpit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but we got some junk food. Uh, went, went downtown with the, the family and checked out the fair. Uh, I'm going to go tonight uh, and do some photography stuff, some slow exposure stuff. But it'll be a little cooler, in theory, uh, once the, the sun goes down. Um, the beginning of the week, I did a, a, a cosplay meet and greet at a local park. Uh, oh, I'm sweet. part of a local group that's nice. mostly it's mostly Seattle based uh, people. Uh, it's like just for photographers and cosplayers to to get together and, and and meet people. And they they're really active. Like they have a sh- it seems like every Saturday there's a shoot of some variety, um, and they'll do themed ones. Like there's a mermaid one coming up that looks really cool, and they're there's gonna be a really big X Men versus uh, Avengers one, but I'm gonna be out of town for that one, unfortunately, and I'm really sad about it. But uh, yeah, they do awesome shoots all the time, but it's usually in Seattle, which is uh, about an hour away from me, and so it's you know harder to, to get to. But we had a we had a local thing, and um, it was like uh, a really 
<laughs> a really awesome Cinderella and a fairy godmother uh, that they Ooh. handmade their outfits. They were super legit, and so uh, I got to shoot with them for a bit. Um, and there's uh, another young lady that uh, made her own outfit, and it was kind of like an evil queen. And so I did a shoot with uh, her as well. And so with them, I, I spent a lot of time. Uh, everyone else, yeah, there's a couple other people I talked to, but I didn't shoot with anyone else. There was, like, a whole bunch of, like, teenagers that were, like, anime scene kids. And, like, I was, like, so not in their clique, so they didn't talk to me. Um, you don't have so the power so, of anime yeah, we got some good on pictures you, you're your side. Fun. I don't even know if they were, because I'm an old grumpy man, and I, all I know is they had, like, hot pink hair, all of them, and, and they were, like, sitting there doing, like, peace signs with their fucking iPhones in the bushes, which is, like, that's, that's <laughs> fun. And I've got a real camera. I was like, yeah, I, I, we can do a shoot, and they just, like, looked at me very uninterested. I'm like, okay, that's fine. That's cool, too. Fuck me, right? What do I know? Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, for the most part, that was really cool. And other than that, uh, like, Melissa, it's been, a, it's been a lot of work, and, uh, yeah, that's... That's been about it, I think, for for this week. There you go. You have just reminded me of something I have not thought about in years, which is that in my town, I live by this cute little, like, old town neighborhood, like, little streets and, like, cute little houses and street lights and all that stuff. Old time stuff. It's very cute. And there's a frozen custard stand there called Fritz's that is, like, the summertime icon. Everybody flocks to Fritz's frozen custard. And I went there Sounds once. Legit. It's really good. And I went there once a couple years ago, later at night, like 10, 11 o'clock. And there's an entire group of high schoolers there. And they are all dressed like a Batman character. You've got like <laughs> Batman and Robin and the entire rogues gallery. Like everybody except for like, I don't know. Alfred and Gordon, like everybody that is a costume. So everyone but is the best there. characters. I know, right? Man. <laughs> I would totally go there as Gordon. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. I need a custard. I need vanilla. <laughs> Thank you. I need to stay vigilant. I need some snacks. Hurry up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're not ordering yeah. like Christian Bale, you failed. I mean, come on, man. You gotta, dress up. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go full method. You don't want Where's to be the like custard? Kevin Conroy or like Adam West there. Like, hello, I am Adam West, and I would like one Nutter Butter Sunday, please. Whatever Adam yeah. West sounds like, because I can't do a voice. Yeah. yeah, and I have no idea if they were coming from like a theme party or a cosplay prom, or if all these bored teens just did this one night. You know, I don't know. Uh, my favorite thing is going out just outside of the bounds of where you would normally see cosplay because when you're in a convention or whatever you know no one bats an eye in fact people look for it and that's a big part of why people go is to people watch and take selfies with them and whatever but uh i love when you go to like say emerald city comic con in seattle and then you go a block away and it's lunchtime and there's like sad thor with half yes. his outfit off eating sushi by himself you know yeah. it's like the best thing to me <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's just something about that that I find so fascinating. Um, after my last, I did a big shoot a month ago in Seattle, and we snuck into an abandoned uh, cement factory, and uh, it was a whole like X Men, uh, oh. Spider Man themed shoot. And so I had a Deadpool and the Lady Deadpool, and they were they were amazing. But afterwards, we went to the spaghetti factory, and uh, so Anthony the the Deadpool he uh, he took his mask off, but he had the rest of the outfit on. And Elizabeth the Lady Deadpool she was still dressed to the nines in her whole outfit. So we were like sitting there eating and like there was people like coming up like oh you like both like impressed and horrified and confused as well. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you are, young man, but I think you look real swell. I think you look real swell. <laughs> and, and it's always fun to see like like because they just see fancy costumes and they quite, don't know quite what it is. But uh it was great at, at the at the spaghetti factory there was this uh I, I think it was like his uncle or something. There was this dude that came up to us and he was like, Hey, uh so he uh he's really shy and he doesn't he's afraid to come talk to you guys and we Aww. look and like twenty feet away there's this little kid like turned around, he's probably like Aww. ten. And uh and uh, of course we're like, No dude, come over, come over man, yeah, come over. What's up? And uh so he turns around and he's wearing a fucking Deadpool t shirt. 
are like, oh my god. And so, yeah, he took pictures with him and everything, and this kid was That's literally trembling. It was like he met Santa Claus or something. Awesome. It was the most like, beautiful thing. So it was like a whole restaurant of old people had no idea who they were and like were like genuinely confused. And then the one kid that like saw Elvis and was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It was uh, it was too beautiful. But I love, yeah, cosplay outside the bounds of where you would normally see it, or normally see it especially like just people eating or whatever, like with their props sitting there by the table because it just looks so weird. It just reminds me of the shawarma scene, you know, in Avengers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so it's so beautiful yeah (laughs) oh man i i i did not have a week that was that exciting or anything (laughs) like that my life is dope and i do dope shit kyle you do you do all the all all the time you're always posting pictures and stuff like that so I'm you know, living that life, son. I'm living that life. I'm stuck at work. I uh, I went to my first like team meeting. Uh, I've been with the c- company for three <laughs> years, and they finally oh. invited me to to the meeting. <laughs> oh. uh, that's right, because you're kind of in limbo, right? Of like like not not yeah, not like, like official full time status, but they're starting to invite you to stuff. I'm, so you're like just the tip, just to see how it feels professionally speaking. Like, kind of. Up? Like yeah, like they've they've invited me before, but then like canceled the meetings. Um, oh. e- even before that, like I was invited to a couple of them, but then my my direct supervisor was like, "Well, you're part time, so you don't really need to go." So I was like, "All right, cool. Ah. I like I'll I'll stay 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 here." And so I sat in this like hour long me- me- meeting where everything they're talking about, I just have no idea what's g- going on. Um, and then mm-hmm. they're like, okay, well, Kyle, how about you update uh, us on what you've been doing? I was like, well, I've kind of been doing the same thing for the past three years. My responsibilities <laughs> don't really change. Um, I'm just c- copying and pasting things into MailChimp, and that's about it. Well, who's next? <laughs> 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 I felt so awkward. Di- it was Ooh. terrible. I had a day this week where we had two meetings, which is unheard of. We have maybe a meeting a month, but this day we had two of them. And it's, I got promoted in like the last handful of months. And before that, I had been the assistant for the department. Mm -hmm. And it used to be that I would go to a meeting and they'd be like, okay, well, if anybody is too busy and they can't finish all their stuff, give it to Melissa and Melissa will do it. And now it's like, okay, if you have questions and you don't know how to do something, Melissa, you can ask her. And, like, it's completely done a 180 of, like, ask Melissa to help versus ask Melissa to help. And it's mind-boggling, and I'm still adjusting to the fact that I have to actually be, like, responsible and attentive in meetings. Yeah. And I'm kind of one of the meeting leaders now. Yeah, it's it's strange. I both love and hate my job. Because it is the mm-hmm. most stupid, boring thing. But then, like, besides the one thing that m- m- meeting I had to do today, I had nothing to do. So I just sat there and <sighs> listened to podcasts. and Or I, I nice. get to, like, read comics or, you know, something. So, who knows? Mm-hmm. So I, uh... I work at a giant comic book store, and I spend most of my time... It's basically, there's, like, a game side and a comic side, and then there's, like, an upstairs where they people hang out and play games and stuff. But I, I spend most of my time on the comic side, because that's my area of expertise. But I've been a manager at the store for, I think, like, three years now. It's been quite a while. And, uh... I only bring that up because I was I was spending a lot of the time a lot of time on the, the game side one day, and there was, like, one of our regulars that, that uh... I was just like, oh, yeah, it's just... Trying to help out, like, oh, we need to make sure that happens, and then over here, make sure this person gets help, and just doing what I, like, always do, just, like, trying to, you know, organize stuff. Mm -hmm. And this dude leaned over, he's like, hey, man, you keep that hustle up, you'll be a manager someday. I was like, dude, I am a manager. And then, for some reason, he stopped, and his eyes got, like, really big, like, like, oh, no, like, I was really weird. It was, like, the weirdest reaction. I was like, I can't tell if you're horrified, or, like, like, oh, no, they should never give you that kind of power. Like, it was, like... I remember being really like, oh, okay, I mean... Oh, God, he actually does work here. (laughs) Yeah, it was like this weird, like, he does have nukes. Oh, oh no, (laughs) it was weird. Odd reaction, but uh, I always thought it was very funny. How do you feel about the Wonder Woman news? I almost did a backflip. If I wouldn't have, like, injured myself, I probably would have. 
Um, I love G. Willow Wilson so much. She's one of the best writers in comics right now. Miss um, Marvel, the Kamala Khan book, has consistently been one of Marvel's best books since it started. I think Kamala Khan is up there with Marvel's best characters of all time, personally. Um, yeah. But the Miss Marvel series has been so, so consistently good. And she's got some other good stuff like Air over at Vertigo that no one read, but Air was really, really fun as well. And she had a, <laughs> another cool graphic novel called Cairo that was also uh, with the same uh, with the same penciler, whose name I'm escaping right now, and I'm sorry on that, but uh, also a Vertigo book. Um, so I've read several things she's done now, but Miss Marvel, just for that alone, she's got, like, goat takes, status for me, you know? the cake. I I saw it was Scott Snyder who tweeted it and he was like I can finally say it publicly and I was like oh shit where like where is this where's the official thing because I had never saw it and they announced it in a YouTube video interesting they're like DC <laughs> all access uh, YouTube videos which I guess is like their official unofficial like YouTube. Ch- channel like let's figure out what happens here at dc comics um and yeah it was like halfway in this video and the woman was talking to uh dan didio and he was like oh by the way i guess i can also announce that uh g willow wilson is coming to write uh wonder woman i was like oh my god holy shit like i was already (laughs) excited Hided for uh, I forget who's next after James Robinson. Oh, Steve Orlando. Um, but I, mm-hmm. yeah, like I was al- already excited for that, um, and and just, just to have them be done with this whole Wonder Woman's brother yeah, storyline thing. Oh my god! So uh, the the Wonder Woman this book is going way it, over Melissa's head. Wonder Woman. Wonder <laughs> yeah, Woman. Yeah. A G. Willow Wilson is a name I've heard on mentioned on episodes of Jay and Miles oh, explain the X Men, and which is where which is where I learned well, anything. Jay and Miles explain yeah. X Men is one of the best podcasts out there. So uh, that is that, and they are kind yeah. of wonderful humans. Uh, so that is a, a very good source to to get info from, and just an, a very entertaining show. So yes, that is not a bad thing at all. Uh, everyone should listen to Jay and Miles because that show is a treasure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Wonder Woman has, you know, she had like this big hit movie. There's been a lot more interest in her character. They did the whole rebirth line wide kind of reboot on everything. And at first they had Greg Rucka, who has written a Wonder Woman before, um, come in with Nicholas Scott and Liam Sharp. And uh, they did some amazing stuff on Wonder Woman. They did like 26 ish issues. Um, a couple years worth of stories but it was a uh, it was twice a month schedule so yeah. it was like yeah so for like a year they wrote Wonder Woman and they did some amazing stuff and kind of uh retold the origin it was a really good jumping on point for new readers the art was absolutely stellar um so Wonder Woman was in this like amazing place it and it was like so exciting and then like James Robinson has written some amazing comics um for me, he's really hit or miss. Um, he's most legendary for his run on Starman. Um, I really like... He most recently did uh, a Scarlet Witch book over at Marvel that I really, really liked. The Scarlet Witch book was actually amazing. Because the Scarlet Witch was a character I felt they... Uh, especially the characters... Or characters writers like uh, Bendis used her like a plot device, not an actual character. So it was like the Scarlet Witch would just show up in any book mm-hmm. and like she would just be so powerful that she... Yeah, no, no more, more this, this, no more that, no more that. and like, like, no oh, Scarlet Witch is no going crazy that. again. And but it was like, I don't know who Scarlet Witch like is, like as a as a as a person at all. I know that she's like the super powerful mm-hmm. character, and w- coming in with that book, it actually explored well, like who is who is she? And all the art was amazing. Like Dave Aja did all these covers, and they were all red, white, and black. So it was like this very similar. They yeah, absolutely stellar. Yeah. So just as far as like the graphic design and everything, I absolutely adored it. So that book was stellar, and that was him just within the last couple of years. And so, but he's also done some horrible garbage. Like he did a book called Cry for Justice, and it was this Justice League book, and literally the covers had people crying on, on every cover. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you, James Robinson? Like, god damn, it was garbage. Hmm. Oh my god, uh, it was horrible. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some of the horrible shit he did. It doesn't really matter. He's very hit or miss. That's I guess what I'm trying to say. Um, 
Yeah, he did the main Justice League book for a while too, and it was horrible. It was right before it was right before um, the New Fifty Two. It was not good at all. Um, so yeah, he's kind of all over the place. And his Wonder Woman stuff, huh. I, you know, I uh, I gave it a shot, and I was not. It was not a love connection. How you gonna How you gonna come in and be like, hey, this story yeah, is I- all about Wonder Woman, and then make it about her brother? I don't I don't care about her brother like at all. I'm so not interested mm-hmm. in that. I think I gave it one issue, and then I was like, yeah, no, this yeah. is not good. <laughs> I'll be honest, I, I never dropped it from my file, but I stopped reading it like a year ago. Um, I kept buying the covers because there's these amazing Jenny Frisian covers that are always like the cover B, the alternate cover, and they're just fucking amazing. So for nothing else, I was like, well, this cover's real pretty, and I feel like I want to like vote with my dollar and let DC know that I love Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. even though this particular story isn't the, the best right now. Uh, so yeah, I am super, super stoked. Uh, Miss Marvel's a book that I, I jumped on with the very first issue, uh, and I had been a very big fan of Carol Danvers when she was in the role, um, and then when she jumped over to, to Captain Marvel... And then Kamala started, and, you know, it made perfect sense to try it out. And uh, I absolutely have adored that book from from day one. G. Willow Wilson is super amazing. That book has been consistently excellent. It's one that I can recommend to basically like anybody that likes comics. It's it's kind of like more of a young adult read as far as it's not like too violent or heavy. The art's super adorable. Um, they really play with the medium and do some fun stuff like. When the camera zoomed in, the art, it's cartoony, but it'll be very detailed. And when the camera pans back, there'll be, like, literally, like, X eyes and things. It'll be a lot more like, like, what, what manga or anime does sometimes. And uh, uh, the stuff like that that I really, really love that the book does. And for the most part, it avoids crossovers and things. There's been a couple of things. But, like, for the most part, it's just Miss Marvel that you have to read. And, I mean, yeah, it's been super amazing. And so, basically, yeah, I can't be more excited for it than 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 i am <laughs> awesome good stuff yeah i'm i'm super stoked comics well, are fun Kyle, did you see too they haven't fully announced yet but i know last week we did talk about the dc um is it dc unlimited all access i don't even remember what the hell it's called the the the, 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 the subscription service it's is coming called dc yeah, well, universe they, is what i've noticed in it. the updated ads they do specifically mention comics now and and they're not being they're yeah, not being they're, they're, they're still not like giving a ton of details. From what they've said and I understand is they're they will put comics on there, but it's not their full backlog. It's it's going to be like a rotating, uh, like hey here are the c- c- comics for this month, and so it's like hey mm. our our Titans comic or our our t- our Teen Titans show just came out so for this month here's a bunch of teen titans comics you know and then next month it might be something else um and it sounds like it's gonna be a fairly hefty kind of rotating thing there's gonna be a lot but it's still like i just like i i want to go read you know the old batman from the 70s and yeah like i just want to have that um, I know on out of the fridge I'd always get really cranky about it, and I'm still gonna get cranky about it. When you're when you're talking, you know, Marvel and DC, these companies have like 80 year histories. I understand not putting out in digital form your brand new book that just came out because you're kind of slitting your own throat, right? At a certain point, that's why there's like the si- yeah, there's the six month delay, what... right? But like past that, it's, like you already yeah. said, if you want to read a Batman book that came out in 1972. And you don't already have. It's not even like there's like a. Pu- you're yeah, shit out so of luck. it's like you're 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 fucked basically. So I don't get why they wouldn't make it easier to legally access that because um, they're getting a little better with their physical collections and things like that. But a lot of people, myself included, you know, would love to have a digital option because um, I'm the type of you know if I read yeah. something on my iPad and I like it enough, I'll probably break down and get a print version. But. Um, yeah, I know yeah. on Marvel Limited when I had my subscription, I read a ton of like Doctor Strange stuff in the seventies that was at that point hadn't been you know collected, and it was like cool. Well, let's either this or try to hunt down the issues on eBay, and good luck with that. Uh, so yeah, I don't get why they wouldn't. It's like a lot of that stuff has already been 
scanned and whatever for various like archive editions and things that like even if they're not you know even if they're not in print at the moment it's like you have digital files sitting somewhere that you already did the work on i don't get why you wouldn't just put them out that would look more attractive to people trying to get into your service i don't know to me it seems like easy money but i'm not a business major what the fuck do i know who knows who knows? They they make some weird decisions yeah. some, yeah. sometimes. And and I it would be cool too if they did um, if they had like exclusive comics. Even I could get that there being some appeal to that. You know that could be cool. Like uh, comics on all comics all unlimited now. There's some cool like well, and they tend to be yeah. more like digital first. Like the like there was a Black Panther one they did, but then they eventually did like a print version of it. I think as long as you give people the option to eventually get it some some other way, I, I think that could be really cool. Um, so yeah, it could be interesting if they do that as well. Like with you know with the new Teen Titans show or whatever, if there's like a you know kind of mini comic or something that they do weekly or whatever their format is, and then eventually you can get the you know the collection or whatever mm-hmm. if you want uh, stuff like that could could be cool. That'd be fun. So I don't know. I'm still they're being awfully secretive about it. It's like they're they're, they're getting a lot a lot of sizzle and not a whole lot of steak at this point. So. I don't know. <laughs> I want to. I want to believe you, DC. You I want to love you. Let me. Let me love you. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you guys what kind of non-comics reading you've been doing lately? Because I've I've never gotten super into comics, but lately I've been reading just a ton of fantasy novels, and like that's what I go and I spend my money on because these are things I really want physical copies of like i want like whole series lined up all pretty on my bookshelf and i'll be like oh i'm gonna get i'm moving into a new place soon i want to like decorate all the bookshelves like okay all these fantasy novels are gonna get like crystals and i'm gonna go into my dad's word working shop and get him to help me make a wand and i'm gonna make a whole thing out of it that's awesome that's that's where i've been living lately do you guys do a lot of like plain old book melissa i I have a confession i don't know how to read I went to public school and they failed me. <laughs> I have to stare at books with pictures. And if there's no pictures, then I'm just lost on the drift. Yeah. No, for real though. The last... <laughs> <Go> ahead, <Kyle. laughs> I was going to say, the last uh, like actual book uh, that I got, I still haven't read it yet. Someone gifted it to me, I want to say like a year ago. Uh, and it was Tanahasi Coates's "Between the World and Me." Nice. Um, I'm not familiar with that one. Tanahasi C- C- Coates uh, was, I, I, I guess, he still is writing still Black writing Panther. It. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, and he's now also writing Captain America. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's he's more of like a political es- essayist. Uh, I think he's from like Baltimore or. or he does a lot of stuff but, for the uh, Atlantic. Yeah. And- yeah. Had a couple novels, I believe. The between the world and, and me is kind of his. I, I, I guess his story of what it was like to be black, just like his his experience mm. from what I've heard, because it's still sitting on my shelf and I haven't read it yet. <laughs> so uh, my four year old waits until I sit down to read, and that's when she decides it's time that she needs all the attention and so with comics with books with any kind of reading um i try to do uh it often falls by the wayside so what i've switched to for my quote-unquote real books is uh audacity or books on tape um so i've been buying there yeah like humble bundle will do cool audiobook bundles and that way i can uh throw them on my ipad and like you know play our tea party or do whatever we're doing and and listen to the book i'd rather read it but that's like how i have to do it so i've uh reread the first three and i'm halfway through the fourth uh dark tower book right now i've i read i read the first five kind of as they were coming out many years ago and then marvel started doing comic book adaptations and the comics were really really good but in the back they would have this cool like back matter and Mm. they'd often be like cool like appendix stuff like just expanded um histories uh, and, and they're all like prose pieces but one of them had uh, this lady robin firth that did the uh dark tower accordance which was like this big big glossary like she knows more about the dark tower than like stephen king even because she's like done so much research on it and she actually plotted the wow. comic so it's basically like 
Stephen King like signed off on it. Yeah. She did the actual plotting herself, and then Peter David, who's like super comics legend, he did all the the scripting. Um, yeah. And then they had Jai Lee do a lot of the early art, and he was doof. it was a gorgeous, gorgeous book, really well done. But in the back. You know, they're interviewing Robin in, in one of the books, and it spoiled the ending of the entire series. And I was like, fuck this. And I just, like, literally threw my oh. book and was like, fuck, fuck, fuck this book for life. No. And so it was, like, took me almost a decade to get back into it. Um, and, yeah, n- knowing what happens at the very, very end, skipping ahead, like, two, two, two books that I hadn't read yet. I'm like, well, fuck. <laughs> but uh, uh, it started when I saw the trailer for the new movie, which I hear is garbage, and I have not seen... Um, I didn't realize it was only going to be one movie. I thought it was going to be the first in the series. Hearing that they boiled it all down to one movie it makes me like, oh my god, how? Like, that's like seven, I think eight even. I think there was an eighth book, like, through the keyhole or something that came out later. But anyways, seven very large books. Like, very large books. Are you going to make a 90-minute that's movie, weird. one movie out of it? Really, guys? I don't know. Uh, so anyway, that's when I started rereading it was to get myself hyped Ouch. for the movie. And I now I just don't really care about the movie. But uh, the, bo- the books are a lot of fun. <laughs> I still really enjoy them. Um, now that I'm older and I have a more critical eye, I think that Stephen King has a weird obsession with certain details in his books. And it's not always just sexual stuff. It's often sexual stuff. But, like, just I'm fascinated with his writing style and, like, the things that he chooses to go very in-depth on. Because it's very, it's seemingly sporadic, but he'll, like, talk about, I don't know, like, a cup. And, like, the cup is green. And it was, like, crumpled on one side. And I'm like, why the fuck did I need to know that? It's weird. It's weird that they, like, the, that random flourishes he throws in there. But, yeah, anytime a dude gets a boner or something in his books, he's going to tell you about it. I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, my God. Uh, but, uh, overall, yeah, I really enjoyed the Dark Tower series. It's it's one of my favorites. And so that's what I've been, that's what I've been rereading. And I have a whole giant, uh backlog of, of things I'm going to try to get to. Um, uh, so what have you been reading, Melissa? Because you... Uh, I have... You posted a picture of, like, a whole bunch of books that you bought, <laughs> I'm going to say, like, yes. last week, and then you had your yeah. your hilarious tweet of, like, I'm going to lay on my bed seductively. This. This is where it happens. This is where I read about wizards. <laughs> yeah, this is where the magic happens. Yeah. yeah. I've been, uh, yeah, the other week, there's a local, well, I have no idea if it's local or if it's nationwide. Do you guys have V-stock? Do you know what a V-stock is? Sounds like uh-uh. cryptocurrency. Is It's like a... Yeah. It's like a it's like a Hastings. Do you have Hastings? No, no Hastings I've seen. That sounds I like a Hastings disease. I Hastings in Montana. That's the last place I ever saw one. Yeah, I think Hastings is further out west, so maybe just around here in Missouri, because I think I've seen one in Kansas City. It's just like a huge, like, video game, movie, music, book, comic book, like, merchandise store. Like, new stuff and used stuff mixed together, and they always have, like, a really big buy-two-get-one-free holiday sale. So that's what I did for my 4th of July this year. I watched American Gods, and I went and I bought a bunch of stuff. And I needed the last four books in the series, and I'm like, I could go get a bunch of movies... I could look at some graphic novels. I could probably, like, get stuff I can use for the review show. But no, I just want more fantasy novels. (laughs) Right now, I am reading The Dresden Files, which is an urban fantasy series about a wizard detective in Chicago. And it is 15 novels plus more. The guy's not done yet. And I am currently on book 11. And with these, the backs of the books are, like, there's so much in each book. They're packed full of stuff. It's very intense. And the back of the next book will spoil you for the book you are reading now. So whenever, like, I go buy these books, I have to, like, take them to somebody and say, blind this for me. I can't look at the back of it. And so then my parents will cover it in, like, tape for me. (laughs) And then when I'm done reading one book, I'm like, okay, time for the next one. And then I get to tear that tape off. And learn what the next book is even about. Dope, there you dope. Go, huh? So you, I, you mentioned to me a while back that you and another friend were doing some kind of Dresden Files reading slash podcast. Yeah. Something. What's the deal with that? 
Uh, he and I are slowly working on it. Like uh, like I said, there's 15 novels, and we're going to do a little episode after every five books I finish. And then okay. when I'm finally done with everything, then we're going to watch the 2007 Sci-Fi Channel TV Ooh. show, oh, which I think only lasted for like 10 episodes. <laughs> and I've heard mixed things about it. Like, I don't think fans liked it that much, but I have a friend who's never read the books, but she's like, the TV show was really fun, even if I didn't know what was going on. So I think it's probably entertaining to an outsider but disappointing to a fan and so i don't know but i'm gonna i'm gonna dive in there and i'm gonna check it out and then that's like a long slow burn project me and him are working on as i slowly work well i'm working my way through these books pretty fast i started the first one in like mid-march and i've been reading them in like a week two weeks for each of them and now i'm on 11 okay yeah there you go so that's that's been my life for the last couple months is just just this wizard <laughs> following the adventures of a wizard mm-hmm sounds good yeah all I know about the Dresden files is it also has a comic and uh it's a it's a pretty popular book that's the only I know, thing I know everything too. I know comes from <laughs> comes from work because I don't leave my house otherwise apparently I hear good things yeah I think I heard the comic is fun there's like a picture of like the cover of one of them in the backs of these books and it it looks good like yeah that that looks like how the book describes him which is all i need to know yeah oh huh. yeah i i had someone recommend it to me a while ago being like you might like it but i've never actually checked it out so one day i may may yeah. have to get the the first book and see what the deal is Yep, it's got my recommendation, too. So I have a mm. question for you guys. Where? Mm -hmm. uh, what is something that you've done recently that turned out to be a really, really good decision? Or like an, like an eye-opening eye experience that, that you didn't know or didn't expect or something like that because i recently um it's i guess semi recently when paul and i were still doing uh mm -hmm. the review show as it was then called the whatnots um we watched a netflix show called dark and it's a netflix original show oh yeah uh, and it's it's fantastic um but then, it, but it's it's a German show. It, it, it's it's all made in Ger Germany. They all speak in Ger in German, uh, so you have to read read subtitles. And then after I got done with that show, it it um it recommended me another Netflix or or original as Netflix d d d d does. They're like, hey, we have more content, and it was another. German Netflix original show. <laughs> I only ended up watching like the first three episodes of that show. It was still fantastic and I would love to go back and finish it. But because I started watching those, it started to like be like, hey, here's a lot more foreign content. Here's German shows. Here's Korean shows. Here's like, here's Irish sh shows. Um, and so I ended up finding two Korean shows that I really liked. And it's just that this idea of watching more like foreign content, content, foreign TV shows, um, that a lot of times you don't hear about or you don't think about because here in America we have Hollywood and that's like all we mm -hmm. see and, and all we know. And it's this big, like, eye-opening thing. Like, there's actually good TV shows that aren't made in Hollywood, right? Like, there's there's good stuff out there. <laughs> yeah. So that was my eye-opening experience, my good decision to watch foreign stuff. Hmm. What about you guys? Oh, I kind of have one. I'm kind of on the verge of one. I have a, a friend. This is a friend I'm going to be moving in with next month. Okay. And she really wanted to go see Panic at the Disco. And she's like, they're doing a concert in Tulsa. I'm not going to Tulsa by myself. Will you come with me? And I'm like, 
yeah, yeah, this sounds like a fun trip with Why this not? friend. And I like getting out and like seeing new places I've never been to Oklahoma before. <laughs> it sounds pretty. I laugh because I live in and Oklahoma. I'm not a big concert yeah. goer. <laughs> And I'm not a big concert goer, and I'm not very musically intuitive, and frankly, a lot of, like, mid-2000s pop punk all congealed into, like, one mass for It, me, it all like, sounded the same, I, so I that's not just you. It, you're, yeah, it's all the same thing. <laughs> it all kind of sounded like <laughs> yeah. Panic at the d- yeah. D- Disco, so. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I've heard some of them before, I think I like them, like, I... Okay, yeah, I'll go with you. It just seems fun to just go see a big, flashy arena show, even if I don't I'm not very familiar with the subject matter, but I'm trying to get familiar with the subject matter. Sure. And yeah, I had I had a really exhausting morning. I took a different kind of allergy medicine than I usually do, and it made me completely drowsy, and then I get to work, and then the system we use is being super slow. It's lagging all morning, and I just needed an energy boost, so I put on that new Panic at the Disco album that my friend told me to listen to, and it like got me through over the hump of like allergy medicine drowsiness and it made me very productive this morning how like, is oh, it how how is the new is album because it came out what a couple weeks ago yeah i think it's brand new i like it i don't really have a lot to compare it to but i've really been enjoying it <laughs> I, it does seem like it'll be very exciting to see live okay and i'm not somebody who really goes out for a lot of live music but th- this should be a good nice. time there you go good stuff trying new things yeah going to new places there is an art deco museum in tulsa that i'm very oh, yeah. excited for oh, nice nice yeah uh we have the chihuly museum of glass in tacoma which is about 30 minutes away from me and they had an amazing art deco exhibit last year and i fucking Ooh. loved it so much oh my god it was so so beautiful oh. uh I, I don't know a ton about art. I certainly don't consider myself being any kind of expert, but I love Art Deco because it's all like real, usable, tangible things just made as beautiful as possible. So it's like, well, it's a light fixture, yeah. but it's a light fixture that's a fucking swan, <laughs> you know, or like, I don't know, or like, it's a vase. Uh-huh. It has a, has a function, but it's the and most it's, beautiful vase. And it's three times taller than it yeah, actually Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm be. not saying it's the most practical <laughs> things on the planet, but there's like, I don't know. I mean, and I'm someone that thinks you can make art for art's sake and you should make art for art's sake, but... uh I do love the aesthetic of Art Deco where you, you can have this entire, like, building and it's just like the elevator looks like this and then you go into the foyer and then, like, the tile looks like this mm-hmm. and there's this whole aesthetic for this entire thing that all connects. There's something about that that I really, really love. I, I also just really love old, like, pulp stuff, like, you know, like the shadow and stuff and that's a lot of the aesthetic from, yeah. from that era and so that's certainly yeah. part of it for me. But, uh, yeah, the Chihila Museum, uh, seeing that Art Deco exhibit just it just blew my blew my little mind it was awesome and uh it was a trip though because i went with my my wife and kids and uh most of the areas are all like you know boxed off and nice and safe and uh we're walking around looking at everything and then uh one of the ladies that worked there she grabbed me and she was like oh just so you know the next room is completely open Mm -hmm. there's only tape on the floor and so I uh, grabbed my children by the hand, and we very slowly and very deliberately walked through that next room because there was like priceless uh, glass from the 1800s uh, in in there. And it would have been hundreds of thousands of dollars or more if I had, uh, oh yeah, if my children oh. had done what they normally do so and run around. They were like, like they were like, "Hey, you have kids. You <laughs> should." like grab them it was, and to make sure they don't I don't remember around. how she phrased it but it was so beautiful cuz she just walked up very politely and was just like I'm searching just just like no um the next room and it was like yeah it was so it was like the best possible way of being like watch your kids without actually like saying that it was uh it's like <laughs> message received my dude uh gotcha uh but that mm-hmm. was yeah God, it's so beautiful uh the, yeah the museum of glass is super dope if you're anywhere in the Seattle tacoma area i definitely definitely recommend it. it and it definitely spawned a whole like me obsessing yeah. over art deco and doing a lot of research on it for months afterwards just because i was so fascinated so excellent that's cool yeah. was was Crossroads. that your decision that like eye-opening experience well, that was a year ago so like i've never seen art yeah deco uh as far as this year, the most transformative thing I did this year was quit my old show, and uh, that was 
uh-huh. interesting in many ways. Uh, one of them on Twitter, I lost a handful of followers that were like other podcasts, and I thought that was interesting. Because I was like, cool, I guess I'm only good to you if I'm a fellow podcaster, and I guess if I'm not, I'm not in your club anymore. It was like five mm-hmm. people that I don't know and have never actually met before. But it was like, hey, man, I was always retweeting your shit, and what? I, like, that's cool. That's whatever. I'm whatever. No, going to be too salty about did, it. Uh, I guess. Did, because you're, you're on Twitter all the time. Did, did you hear about this Twitter bot p- p- purge? Thing. I did, and I didn't lose any followers because I'm not a fucking idiot, and I, I don't deal with a bunch of fucking Russian hackers and shit. So yeah, I lost no one. I loved, I lost, yeah. I love it because there were so many people like, oh my god, what happened? I lost like 1,200 followers. I was like, ha ha, fucking idiots. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Hey, you <laughs> bought followers. Yeah, yeah. No, mine, uh, mine stayed like exactly the same, <laughs> like exact, which felt good. I was like, all right, I mean. I'd like to think I'm not a fucking idiot, but who knows? Whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I heard about it. I, I got to in, enjoy weird. it. It was just like, I love Twitter, man. Like, I didn't pay attention to E3 news this year. What I did was I paid attention to Twitter's reactions to E3. Uh, and so I... I, I live I loved the it. whole thing, so I'm sure you saw me. Yeah, so because I just... <laughs> I, my favorite thing was just looking at people's reactions. So I'd be like, okay, so apparently there's going to be Kingdom Hearts 3 supposedly and of course everyone's like yeah right uh which is the appropriate response to that if and, it actually yeah. c- comes yeah. out it's supposed to be out in so january that's like but that's my knows. favorite thing now is not actively seeking out information it's it's only looking at people's reactions to it and, and then trying to guess like what what, what actually <laughs> happened because that's just more fun now it's, it's a twitter <laughs> game i play with myself it's uh it's, it's a lot of fun there you go uh but yeah that's uh that's been the biggest change because i just you know i spend more time with my wife i used to take every sunday and that was blocked out for the show and i did that for four years and so that was a long time and combined with all the cons and library appearances and things it was just a huge huge commitment and i love doing it i mean i regret nothing but now that i um i've stepped away from it i don't know how i did it for for so long because it was just such a big such a big, such a big time commitment, and I uh, spend a lot of time away from my family. So consequently, I get along better with my wife these days, and uh, we we get to spend more time That's together. Good. And uh, mm-hmm. now, when I podcast like with you guys, I just do it during the day, and it's chill here at my house. Where it used to be like going to a studio, and it was this whole big, deliberate, super time consuming process, and it was super fun. I felt I felt like a big baller having mm-hmm. a studio and being like, yeah, and it's like signs from our cons yeah. up on the wall, like man, I feel legit. But now it's like it's whatever, it's fine. It's like most podcasts <laughs> do it do it. And at home this is like the diy method and you know i don't know it feels more more raw mm-hmm. more legit in some way so uh yeah I, I like that i'm still able to to podcast but it's um it's more chill now you know <laughs> and so uh i like yeah. that yeah. so that's been my biggest moment of 2018 is you know just slowing slowing it on down just slowing it right on down i'm i'm slowly <laughs> buying up fancier toys and equipment to work on and nice. podcast with um it's it, it's it's fun i i i like technology and if i could i would just spend all my money on expensive stuff you still love technology and, <laughs> yeah yes yes i love technology <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it just it's 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 fun to get to like sit down. Like I rearranged my room like a week ago or or something, and I have my de- desk like my where I'm sitting right now. My desk used to be behind me on on the wall. You guys can see the g- 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 the green screen that's behind me. But if you're watching the stream, you don't. I'm just here in space. I'm. Mr. <laughs> Fancy. Um, but I, like, moved my desk uh, so it's not really up against the wall. I have, like, a chimney that's right there that's, like, sticking out into Whoa. the room. And then I have a toy chest that my TV is on, so it kind of <laughs> makes this all cove. Do you, do you live in a dollhouse? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> If you don't show up like Robin <laughs> Williams with a big red hat from Toys in the next uh, recording, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> is is this what houses in like 
old Virginia are like? Richmond is very colonial, so it like, like the, there's a I legit was, civil I war cannibal in is... a tree in your front yard. <laughs> I, I, I mean, <laughs> no, but so yeah, like we have a we, our our house is ridiculous. It it is an older house, so the f- the floors are all made of wood, but they all creak. The stairs are really n- n- narrow and super t- t- tall. Um, mm-hmm. We have a fireplace in basically every room because uh, that's you know what rich white people did yeah. back then. Except now it's illegal because uh, all the houses are c- c- kind of connected, and so if one catches on fire, they all they yeah. all g- go down. Oh, so there's actually um, like a burn ban where you can't but- use your fireplace. Interesting. Yeah. No, we we can't use them. Um, so I like I have this useless, exposed, like rotting brick fireplace in my room, um, and it's it's kind of like it. It's just there, and I have to like work huh. around it. But I like I have my desk now, so it's in this alcove. I have the green screen behind me. I have this fancy new like. Pixar scissor arm <gasps> thing with a shock yeah. mount, um, and yeah, I'm I'm feeling pretty fancy. Except I'm I'm starting to realize how much I screwed myself on my computers because uh, mm. it is not the best for streaming. I I bought a, a Mac desktop last Black Friday. I was like, okay, I'm I'm just gonna get a um, a like a Mac desktop, and that's gonna be my like podcasting, e- editing thing, because they're 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 good for more like artwork stuff. And then I'm gonna get mm-hmm. some rinky dink laptop, uh, just for for on the go, um, and like my computer works fine, but to have discord and obs and the internet mm. and garage b- 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 band and all that stuff running at the same time my computer's like Whoo, hold on <laughs> like first of all <laughs> <laughs> fuck you second of all how dare you? That's, that's a lot that's a lot of, yeah that's pretty labor intensive right there yeah so i'm right right now because like we started the st- the stream, and I noticed it last week with you and me, yeah. Eric, um, that your audio on my end, what was in my headphones, and what was on the stream, wasn't very good. For some, like, mm-hmm. I-, I was like, "Hey, it sounds like your mic isn't plugged in or something," and I had had you say, "Hey, if you could fix it." Um, but hey there. Did you guys want to say hi? It's the k- k- kids. Yeah. Think about it. <laughs> What's up? Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I like, I okay. I was trying to have you fix the yep. okay. audio, and I didn't know what it was, and it was clipping, oh, and right. it, was happening, it was happening again today um, mm-hmm. for, like, for both of you. And so I was like, okay, what can oh. I do? So I'm... I'm streaming Twitch on my phone to monitor the chat in c- in case p- p- people want to chime in and that way I don't have the I- internet on on my computer and I have everything else minimized so I'm 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 like trying to figure it out and it's working a lot be- 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 better now so apparently what I need to do is do like a to PC stream mm. or something, so I'll start Oof. using my laptop top to m- m- monitor the Twitch chat. You have like dual computers with like Which... these giant monitors. You need to get like some big giant yeah. looking like tech shades or something. Be like, wow, look, I'm taking that show. You need to like go full some, techie like... completely. <laughs> You're just gonna turn. You're Sounds just like gonna magnifying. turn into Mr. Universe Straight from up. Serenity. <laughs> yeah. Like if you don't look like Max Headroom or something, yep. you have failed. You gotta like just go all in, just all in. Like if you don't look yeah, like a then, like a like an Echo terrorist from like a mid '90s action movie, then you have failed. I mean, I 
I, I like that's the aesthetic I'm yeah. going for. I want the like two or three <laughs> monitor s- setup. Mm-hmm. I have my my <sighs> mic here and all of that stuff. I have my like my studio lights to to make it like act- actually lit, you know. Um yeah. And I, yeah, like I I like I fucking love technology. See, you're you're planning all this <laughs> and I'm sitting in my kids' playroom. Like, I'm sitting on yeah. a child's chair right now. Like, it is so uncomfortable on my ass. Like, I'm sitting at the most uncomfortable angle I mean, right now. I'm, like, literally covered in toys. Like, there's a doll right here. This is just... This at is the what same I'm time, by. I... I <laughs> yeah, like, I got my tech zone. I'm like, yo, I got Samantha, though. I got Samantha, though, right here. Got my American Girl Nathan? dolls. With What's up, chilling, <laughs> chilling with my American... My mic is on a book because if I don't have it on the book, the uh, bench that I'm on isn't rigid enough and my mic will fall over. That's how high tech my setup is right now. You, you, you need to get the fancy arm stand, man. Yeah, that's that's what I want. When I move in with my roommate later, and then I will be paying so much less rent. I'm gonna save up my money, and I want like a real, like a really professional mic, like you've got, Kyle. I want a whole and a big. I can send you monitor. links of of stuff. Ah, oh, that'd be nice. Because my my mic. It it works. It's it's a fantastic mic, but it's meant for an actual studio. Uh, so mm. it, it's a mic that picks up everything. Um, so I can hear my kids yeah, like Whoa, in the background all the time. Thankfully, yeah, mm. like it 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 picks up a lot. Like I I think mine is still like more like it, the area it picks up is smaller than what yours does eric but it's still it's meant for like perfectly silent thing where there there are there are mics you can get that are like it will only record like what's like right yeah. here in front of it it looks like you've got a condenser mic yeah which so. is those are just uh, there's condenser mics and dynamic mics and dynamic mics are what like when people are live singing and you have to be right up on it that's that's a dynamic mic and yeah like these these that, lovely that's, guys that's the one yeah, that i the, need well and without the fridge we use dynamic mics um and those were nice because i'm like really loud and that way it uh it would isolate the bleed between between all of us going to our own channels um is yeah, we used to record. I think I mentioned we used to record at the shop, and we had like one condenser mic we put in the middle, and it was so sensitive that we had to like turn off the air conditioning because you could pick up the hum mm-hmm. from the building. Yep. It was so sensitive. Uh, so with this mic, I know it's really sensitive, and I know Ugh. I can hear like everything in my house. But it's also like, well, fuck it. It's the nicest mic I could get. I could have gotten a shittier dynamic mic and get a little mixer or whatever. But like uh, this, this is a lot well, the, nicer. The, the one. So the the one I have, there is a dynamic mic v- v- version of of this, and it's a USB mic, so it fits right into the computer. You don't need the mm-hmm. audio interface, okay. which if you're an audiophile, it, technically the USB ones aren't as quality, yeah. um, but this is still fantastic, and yeah. I think they're both around like 100 to like 150 at the most um so oh, that's it's nice yeah it's it's really cheap for how <laughs> good it is i don't uh, want to sound like a commercial cool. but, but i got yeah, a road and, mic and it's uh it's a usb condenser mic and it's i think i paid 20 bucks more than what people play pay because most people get the blue yetis or some kind of blue mic a blue there's nothing wrong with the blue stuff i don't <laughs> yeah. think it sounds that great in my opinion my road mic sounds way better for like 20 bucks so like that's <laughs> I, I was willing to pay more yeah, I got one of those blue mics. It was a gift, though. It was like a surprise gift, so I I, I was not. Oh able no! It's, to I mean, it's the standard. It it's the industry standard. It was... It's like everyone uses Audacity. I use Audacity. It's a shitty program, but it's free, and yeah. everyone uses it. I have mm-hmm. nicer recording programs now, but I don't know how to use yeah. them, so I keep using Audacity anyway. Someday I'll learn yeah. how to use my nice programs. Yeah, mm-hmm. I keep buying these humble <laughs> bundles for all this cool software. So I have like sony vegas and all this amazing recording software so i could do videos and audio and all kinds of cool stuff I, I've, I do, i'm lazy and i don't know how to use it. <laughs> i've only got their comic stuff i i, I get the 
e- e- emails when it's like we have audiobooks or we Their have all this software, like, software bundles are amazing because they're like stuff. 30 bucks and they'll give you like 400 dollars worth of gear Ooh. so they're it's totally worth it like <gasps> the newest one i got was a bunch of like antivirus I and anti to... so i've got like a, my own virtual private network Check and stuff out. and yeah a bunch of awesome antivirus software and, and anti-spam and whatever i'll probably get like 30 bucks and all of it lasts for like a year or two so it's like hell yeah no i love humble bundle i, I throw the money all the time so beautiful Good stuff. Well, let's see. Did uh, did you guys hear about this whole thing with Scarlett Johansson? Yes, I did, Kyle. She, uh, yeah, yeah, she. I saw you post mm-hmm. that article earlier. Yeah, I, I p- posted it in on our Twitter and also uh, in our Discord. So you guys can join our Discord and hang out yeah. with us and talk with us throughout the week. Um, but yeah, so I I feel like what happened is that she should have learned this. It's, a long it was Ghost time in the ago. Shell all over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and like it's good what she did. She basically got c- cast in a role where she was playing a transgender character, and she took the role, and there was a whole bunch of backlash, and I like. I feel like this is a case where it's like, really, you've done similar things multiple times over. There was Ghost in the mm. Shell. There was that one where she's playing an Asian lady, I, I think, or, uh, or, or no, that was uh, Emma Stone, right? That's that Aloha movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sadly, Hollywood is a history so, of this, I mean, yeah. But but still, like like it happens a lot, and there's always this backlash. And on one hand, yeah, like I understand, like hey, she's a decent actor. A lot of people really really like her. I think she, in 2017, she was like the highest grossing female actress. Um, so like she, she has the acting ch- 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 chops to do a lot of different roles. And I think that's kind of the point of acting is to become something you're not, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, at the same time, like, come on, like, the, like, we're <laughs> we're at an age where we want this better representation for all mm-hmm. sorts of different people. Um, I, I mean, what did you guys think? Cause they they announced it today that she actually stepped down from the role. So. Do you guys have thoughts? Ah, on that? Th- this wasn't something I'd been familiar with until you posted that article, and I you know skimmed through it, and yeah, it seems like I think she did a solid thing. I think I think learning to play somebody very very different than yourself is always a a good experience for a person. I think you learn like new levels of empathy in doing something so hands on like that that you wouldn't have gotten in uh another circumstance i think the people that do take on very different roles like that come out with a you know a a great helpful experience for them but yeah like that's a lot of enrichment for one person versus like an ongoing legacy of a a film and who it's going to affect and what people want to see out of it right yeah yeah i get considering like a very talented big name actress but Ah, they, got, they got there in the end. <laughs> that's the, the the risk you take, right? If you have these kind of no name actors, like, are people really gonna want to go see it? Like, sure, you might have the actual transgender a- audience who will still absolutely a hundred percent support that, but then it like, if you want it to hit mainstream a- 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 audiences and c- catch on there oftentimes you have to have someone who's like oh scarlett jo- jo- johansson i n- i know her like i like i mm-hmm. recognize her because actress x or actress z you know is is in it then i'll i'll go see, see, see it whereas if it's someone that i don't know i feel like i'm less inclined i don't know it, I it's a like balance it, it's 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 hard to figure out because i'm i'm not 
transgender. I, I, that, mm-hmm. Like, that's not my experience. I don't really know, you know, exactly what they want to, to see and what they don't want to see, you know? Uh, I, I mm-hmm. think my so, biggest problem is yeah, you don't, you don't have like... transgendered actors now playing cis people. That's not a thing that happens a lot now. So you True. can't just say that, oh, we went with, like, the best person for the role, or we went with, like, the star because they were a star, because to me that's that's total bullshit. Because uh, trans actors now, at least in anything I've ever seen, the only roles I've ever seen trans people in in mainstream works is playing trans people. Is I, I'm not someone that thinks, yeah. like, you know, if you're writing the Wonder Woman comic, you have to be a woman or that kind of thing. Like, uh, I don't think you have to do that. I also think that... You know, representation does matter, and I think it would be more authentic coming from someone with actual lived experience. Um, and I, I don't know, like, I guess for mm-hmm. me, personally, I think Hollywood stars are not why I go see movies. That's just me, personally, so your mileage might vary. Like, yeah. if a movie looks good yeah. to me... I'll go see it. Like I love the movie Crawl, for example. It's an early sci-fi movie from the eighties. I don't know anyone in that movie. I think like I think Liam Neeson might be in that movie or some shit. But like no, like no one was a star in that movie. <laughs> but it was a fun movie. It was really cool, and I enjoyed it just as much as if it had had you know like Tom Cruise in it or something. Um, and there's been plenty of movies with actors that like, I loved, but then like the movie looked like fucking garbage. So I was like, well, I'm still not gonna go see it. So uh, yeah. yeah, I <laughs> I, I feel like. Especially with trans people, we have so so much ground to cover and so much to do, and it just feels very disrespectful to just say, um, you know, that Scarlett Johansson or whoever was 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 ever in the running. Uh, that just seems ridiculous to me. It's like, fuck, was it Exodus? What was it? There was a movie a couple years ago mm-hmm. that was like all white people, and they were all cast as like ancient Egyptians. And they were all white people. And it was like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, and, yes. and I think it was Ridley Scott, I want to say. And it was, the whole justification was, well, they're stars. I'm like, well, cool. Make, make a trans person a star then. You know, make more black stars. Yeah. I'm tired of this fucking bullshit. Like, Johnny Depp is a serial abuser, and you keep hiring him for things because he's a star. Fuck Johnny Depp. Like, he shouldn't have a career anymore. You know, we need to have more stars then. If that's really what it is, then, yeah, make trans movie stars. You know, I'm done with the conversation personally. Yeah. Like, it's it's ridiculous. I know I love Scarlett Johansson. Like, she's great in a lot of stuff she's been in. Um, I really hope she would have learned from the, the, the Ghost in the Shell thing with this. It's only because of the backlash that she, you know, stepped down. So it's like, it's great that she eventually listened, but... But there was backlash. No, I'm saying I'm saying she should have learned like, in the, the first fuck? place, and that movie sucked. And it was like it should have been. To me, that movie was so inherently like Japanese, and that character was so inherently Japanese yeah. that like, and it could have been great, you know. Uh, so I don't know. Like, it's, I understand. Like, yes, to a certain extent, it's acting, and you do need to be able to like transform yourself. Like, I I, I totally get that. But yeah, I feel like with where we're at, you know. Uh, trans people are just so not getting enough representation anyway. I mean, we're we're having arguments of w- yeah. what ba- bathrooms they can even go in right now. So it's like <laughs> now's not the time to like have an already established, amazingly I, rich movie star getting even more money because of it. You know? Yeah, I I I I feel like we need to go through a, a good lengthy period of like great representation from the from the people it needs to be. F- <laughs> for yeah. mm-hmm. um that was super v- 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 vague but i i think you guys know what i'm saying yeah well like laverne right? cox is like laverne um, cox yeah. is like the biggest trans actor that i can think of and uh and she's absolutely right. amazing mm-hmm. but the biggest thing that i know her from is orange is the new black which is a great show and i love that show it's so good but she plays a trans actress on on that show which is not bad in any way that's great that's like representation done right uh, and that showed us yeah. some really cool things because she's got a twin brother, and so there's some there's some stuff with that, with like the flashbacks and everything. Mm. Um, and I think it's really cool and really well done. But like, if we got to a point where Laverne Cox and other you know stars were getting more you know cisgendered roles and whatever, uh, you know, as women, then uh, then we could you know re reevaluate. But uh, we, we'd have a long way to go before we we got to that point. I think. Yeah, and then, so I, I I guess what I'm saying is yeah we need that period where we can actually see what it's like where we can make the, the those stars where we can 
tell those stories and then hopefully after that we've learned enough that we can get to that more idealized place where hey if if a straight person is cast as a uh, or like a, a cisgendered person is cast as a trans p- p- person it's not going to have this big backlash because again you, you're mm-hmm. it like acting is this tr- transformative thing but we need to see it on both sides yeah. right where then a trans mm-hmm. person can be be a a, a cisgendered p- person in some major role you know um who knows how long it, it it'll take to get there but hopefully you know yeah and i think that needing a big star for a thing is like something people get people keep telling like oh of course like people are gonna go see something with somebody they recognize in it which is a thing i have yet to see like it's it's said in theory but i don't see that in practice i don't see somebody being like well i like channing tatum and i have to see he's in it there i am like i've not seen a person do something like that sometimes they'll be like oh what that guy's got a good in everything that you know, I've enjoyed her before. Maybe it's like that's never the deciding yeah. factor for anyone. That's like a tiny like that makes like three. Well, percent think of, of like the difference. Yeah, like, the mummy, like, right? With like with Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is a bankable star. <laughs> Tom Cruise has had so many box office successes. <laughs> people, well, people like people love Tom Cruise. <laughs> I like I like Tom Cruise. Even post crazy, I still love Tom Cruise. Like I get it. I've seen a lot of Tom Cruise movies that I've loved. <laughs> And some that are just horrible, but I love them anyway. Like, Top Gun's probably my favorite movie ever, and it's garbage, and I love it. But, like, uh, <laughs> The Mummy couldn't be saved just having a star. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's not it's yeah. not a guarantee, and, and Hollywood needs to start, stop acting like it is. Uh, I don't know. Speaking of yeah. uh, Scarlett Johansson, they also uh, announced that they found... That Marvel has hired a director for their Black Widow movie. Oh. Uh, I don't remember who it is off the top of my head. Um, actually, I think I. Where did I have it? I don't. I don't know. It is too difficult to find at the <laughs> moment, so I am not going to do that. Um, yeah, but they. It's a woman who's going to be directing it. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. Like I I I feel, I feel like that was a good thing Marvel did. I don't know how much people with, with all the the stuff that's happening with Scarlett Johansson. I don't really know how much people are still wanting a Black Widow movie. <laughs> it's taken them way too long. I I'd still like to see one. I I always said that I wanted to see um a Hawkeye and Black Widow movie with Shield with Shield as the backdrop because yeah. I don't think that that would be fantastic. I mean, no disrespect to these are your favorite characters, but I don't think in the cinematic universe, Black Widow or Hawkeye are terribly interesting by themselves. I love them in the comics, and I've read solo comics by both that I really, really love, so I know that they have the potential. But uh, I, with what I've seen on screen from both in the, in the movies, they, they, they've done better in a support role. But if you have the both of them together... And then you have a lot of Nick Fury and stuff like that, a lot of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff, them doing more Wet West stuff, more spy stuff. I would love that movie. That would be amazing. Like, that's what I would love to see personally. I would love to see... I I don't know if it'd be Nick Fury-centric, but uh, a movie in which Nick Fury recruits Natasha to do some stuff for (laughs) S.H.I.E.L.D. And the villain is Hawkeye. Or, uh, yeah. Is... uh, Ooh! Because because he 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 started out as a bad yeah. guy in in the yeah, so just their origin story yeah and so it's this whole idea of like has Natasha really gone to Shield yet because she, mm-hmm. maybe she's just starting to work with them is she a Russian spy is Clint <laughs> you know is he gonna become a good guy and go to Shield or not who knows um. Something like that could be really cool. Yeah, um, it could be a lot of fun. I still, I'd love to have a Miss Marvel, you know, movie, big time, a Kamala Khan movie. I would love that. Uh, I, I feel like that. I feel will like inevitably, happen. inevitably it will. I'm, you know, I'm super stoked for Captain Marvel. Um, that's going to be amazing. Uh, for Hawkeye, more than anything, um, 
Kyle, did you ever read the uh, the Hawkeye, the Matt Fraction run from a few years ago? I did it not. Fucking, it was fucking amazing. Not. Melissa, I think you'd really love it too because it's Clint Barton and there's a there's a mm-hmm. there's a lady, um, Kate Bishop. She's a she's a young woman uh, that they killed they killed Hawkeye yeah. in the comics many many years ago and they did an, an, a, a really good book called the uh, young avengers where they had all these teenage replacements for the characters mm-hmm. um and so there was this young woman kate bishop this this uh, asian american spoiled rich girl that takes over the role of of hawkeye mm. and uh when he comes back she's like well should i step down and like no we're both hawkeye now and so there's just two hawkeyes in the marvel universe now and so the hawkeye yeah. book it's uh, matt fraction and then uh, a rotating stable of artists pr- not primarily uh dave aja whose stuff is just amazing um it's just it's them either teaming up or alternating where it's like you know primarily one or the other um doing their adventures but it's all them on their days off from being superheroes so like it's like him dealing with it's him dealing with yes. people in his apartment complex and stuff like that. Like he has a neighbor that calls him Hawk Guy <laughs> all the time. Like hey, you're Hawk Guy. He's like oh my god. And there's a whole like there's a whole pack of Ukrainian gangsters that wear like Adidas track suits, and he has to mess with them all the time and like keep keep the people people in this building safe. That, that r- it's reminds amazing. me. It's really funny. It's so, really good. Yeah, I've had that one recommended. I want to that. As, I, I want that as a Netflix soon. show. I want I want that because that, that would need to be, be a fantastic. show, but like I I that on Netflix because well there's stuff where like the first thing in the book is Hawkeye gets like amazingly injured. There's like this badass scene where he's like flying out of a window wearing his outfit mm-hmm. and about to shoot a bow, and then the next scene he's in traction in the hospital because he's just a human guy. So and, yeah, and then it's like him wheeling away, and there's so many scenes where he's just drinking straight out of a carafe of coffee, bandaged up, just so super fucked up, and it's like and Kate Kate always comes by mm-hmm. unscathed, so she's always looking beautiful and great, and he's just like oh in the background like hobbling along like fuck it's so beautiful because <laughs> because they never try to sexualize the relationship too it's very much like buddy cop almost like father daughter like they never make they never make it gross they never make it weird i'm so grateful for that um it's more of like a definitely like a mentor thing but she's also his equal in fact better than him in a lot of ways and like he knows it. he's the fuck up uh it's such a good book i I recommend that book to like anyone ever but i'd love a netflix show with that tone that vibe and with with equal billing of you know the kate bishop character that reminds me uh a long time ago i pitched uh that run the matt fraction david aja run on the old whatnots Mm -hmm. podcast to paul and he i so that he was in i i don't he moved around a whole bunch at one point he was in Mm -hmm. portugal and one point he was in korea and one point he was in china so we always had a terrible internet connection um and when I said Hawkeye, he couldn't understand what I said. So he was like, hot, hot guy? You you want to do a hot guy? Wh- That's all I you- ever want to read is hot guys. Thank you. And I, I was like, no, mm-hmm, Paul, mm-hmm. Hawkeye. Hawk-, and he was like, Hawkeye or Hawkeye or hot guy? What, what, like, hot guy. And he was 100% serious of just like, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm like... <laughs> Hawkeye from the Avengers. Which hot guy f- f- from the Avengers? <laughs> just like, no, you oh, idiot. This is the modern day who is yeah, on first. first. Yeah. This is gold. <laughs> who's on first? Exactly. Who is on first? No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. I'm asking you, who's on first? That, that's what I just mm-hmm. said. <laughs> Perfection. And like, like we, we, we had that m- 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 moment, and I was so mad at him. And then, and then af- afterwards, going back, and I, I listened to, 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 to it. It was so fucking funny. <laughs> well, if you guys ever decide to do it on the review show, I would love to be on because I love that book so so much. It is so mm-hmm. good. It's amazing, and it's only it's like twenty two issues, so it's not a super long series. It's a it's a pretty quick read, but there and they well they do some amazing Bastard, things yeah. like Clint is is partially deaf in the comics. And so he has to use ASL. It's something they, yeah. they don't bring up in the movies at all, and I really wish they would. And even a lot of the comics, they... So there's one whole yeah. issue of the comic that's completely in ASL. And so there's no dialogue at all. That's awesome. It's beautiful. Oh. Um, and there's another dog... There's a, there's a really cool supporting character, Pizza Dog, that gets introduced... 
Pizza Dog, Pizza Dog right away. And there's an episode that does a bunch of like flashback stuff um, through Pizza Dog's eyes, and there's no dialogue. It's all through like his perspective as the dog, and, mm-hmm. and you get to see stuff that you like didn't like the camera didn't get to see before, and so it's really beautiful. So they have at least a couple of like really special episodes within it too. But the ASL one was like so beautiful for that because again, representation matters, and it's awesome. it's it was in the comic that he had a hearing aid for a while, and um, and you see in the book where it gets like busted and he has to like. Like yeah, it has to sign or read lips and stuff. It's really it's really beautiful because that's not something that they always call attention to. So to me, it was an important moment. And it, and again, comics being visual medium, they did something actually new and, and interesting with the storytelling on those two issues. That the, the whole story is worth reading, but for those two issues alone, absolutely worth reading the entire series. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Do you guys have anything else you want to chat about? Oh. Before we wrap things up here, or should we call it? I, I don't know. I th- yeah, yeah, word? yeah. I, I, I don't know anything that's happening outside of in the world outside of where my office is. That is a okay. <laughs> we might call it there then. Uh, if you guys were joining us in the live stream, thank you, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are live every Friday uh, at five thirty p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and let's see, we, if you missed the live stream, it comes out a week later on YouTube and as a podcast. If you like this show, uh, or any of our other podcasts, uh, you guys can go to patreon.com and support us for just a buck, uh, and you can get all of our episodes early. Uh, what other housekeeping, uh, our episode on American Gods just came out this past week um our episode on star wars rebels season one will Mm -hmm. be out uh i guess by if by time you guys most of you are hearing this as a podcast it should be out that next day should be out tomorrow um but uh yeah i think that about does it Eric, where can the where can the people find you uh, on the interwebs? I am at the Bobby Krogan on all the things, uh, mostly Twitter and Instagram, for my personal shenanigans. Uh, also on Instagram, Eric Mannix Photography for my cosplay and fashion stuff. There you go, Melissa. What about you? You can. You can find me on Twitter at WilkyWit, W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. Uh, come at me if you want to talk about fantasy novels. Yeah, if, if you want to talk about wizards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you guys can find me on on Twitter at Hush315. Uh, you can follow uh, all the updates for all of our podcasts and such at The Whatnots on Twitter. You guys can go to thewhatnots.com for a whole lot of more information. I've been slowly working on this site and improving things slowly. Uh, So it's looking a little different. It's still not exactly where I want things, but it is slowly getting there. We now have a a new thing that will tell you what we are rating each week for the review show. Nice. Um, So if, if you guys didn't make the live stream or you just happened to stumble upon our website, all that info will be right there. Uh, I think that is it. Uh, oh, I do, I would love to start up some kind of email section in the Ah. captain's log. So you guys should email us all the random questions (laughs) that you guys can think of and want us to talk about. Uh, doesn't matter if it's about comics or movies or life or, uh, what kind of underwear we're wearing. How wrong we were about the Tom Cruise mummy movie. (laughs) Like, hey, man, that movie was my jam. And fuck y'all for life. That's my shit. No one one would ever say that, but in case you did. Someone probably likes that movie. Um, But yeah, so you guys can email us uh, at thewhatnotspodcast at gmail.com and we will maybe answer some of them on the show here. We would love to hear from you guys. Um, I think that's about it. So we will see you guys next t- t- time. Uh, this has been the Whatnots Captain's Log. Adios, guys. Bye.
Bye. Bye.